For the past two weeks or so, two good friends, Sam and Theo, and I have been on a sailing cruise up in northern Michigan. Now, as cooler temperatures start to arrive with the fall season, and with jobs and school to get back to, we find ourselves heading back south along Michigan's west coast to our home port of South Haven. So it's morning and I am just out on deck looking at the chart plotter here. Circle fabric. Dismiss. All right. Um, and I'm just gonna route out what our route would be to, to Pentwater. We all kind of like it here in Manistee. Uh, we all really like it in Manistee, but it's looking like tomorrow is gonna be all rain. And today we have a better weather window to get south. So the wind is a little bit higher today than tomorrow, but we all would prefer to be in a little bit higher wind than wind and rain. And by higher, I just mean it's about two knots higher than tomorrow. So just going to route out our, our trip to Pitwater. And if it looks like we can get in by six when the higher winds pick up, we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. Ooh, mac and cheese, dude. This will be yeah. After like a cold day, that'll be really good. Mac and cheese. I mean, all of the day, all of the week. All of the week. I didn't have a lot, so we got soups. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah, probably didn't. Speaking of Germany, Polish. Oh. <laughs> Okay, um, well there's more in there. Yeah. That is kind of surprising. Is it? I don't know. Yeah. What? No, I'm good. Anyway, so we're all he we're headed out. Uh, the current coming out of the Manistee River is quite strong. It's uh, pushing us along. We're going four knots and I barely have the engine past idle. So it's quite, quite the current if you're ever docking around here, just keep that in mind. It was a wonderful stay and Manistee's an absolutely beautiful uh, place to drop by if you're ever on this side of Michigan, so definitely do it. We are making way now around three, four knots and um, headed out. Our goal today, our objective is to get to Pentwater. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. High winds are projected around six, so we're hoping to be in before then. I'm thinking we might catch the tail end of those, which is okay. Uh, our, our thing with today and going today was we prefer higher winds, which we can deal with, to rain. When you get rain and winds, then it becomes interesting. <laughs> um, anyway, but we're just headed out of the harbor and uh, hopefully we'll be in Pentwater. Right now it says eight hours and 25 minutes. So we're hoping to do a little bit better than that when we get out onto the water, but we'll see. Say something about Manistee. This place? Yeah. It was a pretty cool town. <laughs> Very short-lived. Yeah, we weren't here for too long. I think this was our, like, shortest stop. Maybe. Might have been. It was, a, it was the nicest marina that we've been at yet yeah. so far. Such a shame. Yeah, it would have been nice. It doesn't around. look like the winds are that bad, actually. No, right now it doesn't. That American flag isn't, it isn't horizontal. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So we might actually have a like, pretty relaxing sail. For a little bit. We are going to get some rain, and I bet we're going to get a little lot of wind as we come around that big sable lighthouse. Good. Oh. Uh, that. Good. Yeah, this looks like a good day for sailing. Uh, it's a fall sailing day. Okay. So Sam, tell the camera what we learned about the Coast Guard. Coast Guard are prohibited from charging you for rescue. This is something we were pretty curious about, not that we would, you know, intentionally put ourselves in danger or anything like that, but when you get in an, an ambulance, you're charged a pretty big fee. And um, we were kind of curious what the deal was if you, you had to get rescued for some reason. Um, but according to this article, Sam just, and we kind of thought this was the case, but according to this article Sam just read, the U.S. Coast Guard is expressly prohibited from charging a fee for rescue operations, um, which is quite interesting. 
and it's also really good because you don't want someone like out there who needs rescue like say oh i can't oh afford, i can't afford like to get rescued ambulances. right like we do with ambulances i mean and the coast guard is pretty damn good at what they do uh, we were reading in an article earlier that this year they've run 1300 uh, search and rescue operations on um, the coast of Lake Michigan, or the uh, Great Lakes. 130 people a day. Yeah, 130 people a day. Really? That's a lot. I mean, that's a pretty important agency to have, if that's the case. Which, that's a lot of people a yeah. day. At a yeah, tune good. of $680 million a year. That's what it said, 680 Yeah. Just for the Great Lakes? From the taxpayer. No, oh. all of Coast Guard. Oh, that's, oh, that's nothing. <laughs> That include like downtown? It's totally worth it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everywhere on the coast. Give them a higher budget, man. Well, guys, let's say this is good sailing weather. We got one boat ahead of you. I see it. Thank you. I'll wait for you to come back here before we tack around, okay? All right, ready to tack? Helms down. It is. 4-9. That's what I was hoping for. Well, that's what it was projected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys, we can do this. We can do this all day. Well, as long as it maintains. <laughs> maybe we can do so it all day. Uh, autopilot could almost do this. Yeah. Probably could almost do this. I mean, there's <laughs> three of us who all are down the tail, okay? Yeah. It's a, little, it's a little bit darker ahead of us than behind us, though. It does. We're going to get. Is behind us. We're definitely going to get some rain. Yeah. We know that. We know that. I think all of this out here is going to. We're going to get that. Um, nothing calling for tea storms until tonight, but. Well, you should. Where you're right over here. But you can even see those in the streaks of the, the rain coming down off those clouds. Um, so as soon as three hits, we'll be in it for the rest of them. If we're gonna go out, let's go out and go out fast and then come back. Go, why don't we head out a little bit, Sam? Okay. Let, 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 let's go out fast. Okay, so let's let's drive and then I'll adjust the sails. Okay? Okay. So right now we are paralleling Nordhaus Dunes Wilderness Area, which is right behind us. Uh, in the video, I doubt you can kind of, might just be able to make out the land. And then right in front of us is a uh, Big Sable Lighthouse, which is about a 150 foot um, lighthouse. It's one of the tallest along Lake Michigan here. Uh, it might even be the tallest, um, but it's very distinctive because it has this, it's a white lighthouse with a black top and a black stripe across it. Across it. You can see it from a long ways up. It's not on right now, but we can still see it. 
Um, the cool thing about where we're at is uh, all three of us have actually camped along this North House Dunes wilderness area uh, multiple times. It's a, it's a beautiful, it's actually the only wilderness area in the Lower Peninsula. Um, and it's not very big, it's only about seven, nine miles long. Um, but at the end of it is Big Sable Lighthouse. And all of a, it, and um, we've all been to Big Sable and we've all been to North House. And this is kind of our first time paralleling it from outside here. Oh, it looks like we got company too. It's going about our same speed. Huh. Anyway. Well, he's not trying to make haste. No. Uh, going maybe a little, just a little bit faster than us. He'll pass us, but. We've seen a, a decent amount of boats out today. Yeah. I mean, that guy, he's probably fully indoors and warm. Yeah. Probably uh, sipping hot cocoa on the inside. Yeah, anyway, uh, we did get hit with this rain like we thought we would a little bit earlier than we thought we would, but uh, it's still not a bad day. We've been able to sail for probably um, 60 to 70% 70, 70 of the day. And um, the only reason we turned on our engines is because we do want to get into port before it gets dark, especially in so-so weather. Whoop. Now we're trying to let auto, our little auto helm steer here, but Doing all right. So we're just rounding uh, Big Sable Point. Big Sable Lighthouse is just behind us, um, somewhere back there. Filming backwards while sailing is not the. Still working on it. Easiest, more smartest. Easiest, more smartest. <laughs> right. Um, we just took down the main sail to prepare for you know whatever the weather might be around this point the weather's from behind us so um, it's probably going to be somewhat similar uh, but we wanted to do it anyway um, when we took down the mainsail and pointed the boat up into the wind we kind of really realized that we are in a lot of wind and it doesn't feel as much that way when we're running or we're heading downwind because you know we have this, this apparent parent wind working with us it feels pretty nice you know we're coasting down the waves but as soon as you point the, point the boat upwind you realize oh you know we are in a little bit of wind I'd say uh, 15 16 17 is that right yeah yeah so we did that and uh, right now on just the Genoa we are moving at uh, five five four five five um, which is pretty good for us uh, we could really do this all the way down to Pentwater the chart plotter has us getting it at 739, which is about right. Do so you say eight. South Haven? Yeah, <laughs> you want to sail through the night again? Oh. Actually, that would be even more than 80. That would be a longer trip. Yeah, well, we also would be good. That's true. Ooh. South Haven would be quite a stretch. Getting hot up there? Just reapportioning things. My head was toasty. <laughs> Sam just I just saw some clothes fly through the companion way as we get Sam uh, it's tossing some stuff down here. So he's reapportioning things. Anyway, so I'm down below, Sam's driving. Um, we just uh, been sailing behind right beyond Big Sable, uh, Big Sable Point behind it. And um, when we first rounded the point, we had just our Genoa up. We were doing around 5.5. Five. Um, and then um, we, our speed decreased to around four, four and a half knots. And uh, we thought it would be good to throw up the, the mainsail again, but at a reef because it is projected, the wind is projected to increase. So we rounded, we rounded up, turned into the wind, put up our mainsail to our reef point, and headed back down. And now we're doing, what are we doing for speed? Six for a bit, but we're, uh, five, three. That's still pretty good. So, 
he, he was, Sam just said we're we're up to six. We were up to six. So we've, we've since we uh, put the main up, we saw six, and now we're around five three. And in both of those, you know, uh, that's great. We'll take it. We're cruising, and so um, uh, that's really good for us. Anyway, I'm just down here to make some calls to the Pintwater Marinas. The municipal marina is closed, and so we're going to be at the Southern Marina. Um, currently, they're, we're experiencing a busy signal, so as soon as I get off of this, I'll try them again, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a marina in Pintwater at night. So I just popped back out on deck, and Sam ran a really interesting experiment for any of those of you who are interested in this kind of stuff. Um, a question that we have been pondering around at least today probably longer than that is you know what should he do when you're when you're sailing with a prop um you see that has a prop and uh it's an inboard uh should you leave it in neutral so it, the prop actually spins while you're underway or should you put it in reverse so it stops the prop uh, we've all been told different things but sam just ran a test and i'm gonna let him tell you what we found what do we find sam So we're now about an hour out. We pent water actually under that. And uh, we had Sam pull up the harbor on uh, our pilot book here, our chart book. And uh, what do we got? I'm seeing Snug Harbor Marina Hoist. Okay. Right over here. So come in and go around here. I'm not sure how things are labeled. So in here, um, we're going to go up to, we'll start to see some long floating docks. Those will be numbered one through 10. And then we're going to go, um, to seven docks past the floating docks numbered one through 10. And that will be our Harbor, but we don't want to go as or That will be our dock. We don't want to go as far as Charlie's Marine because that's a different Marina. So it'll be some point at the end. I'm thinking it will be somewhere along there, yeah. It only looks like there's one, two, three ducks there, but there might be more. I'm, that's probably just indicated on the... Yeah. Maybe not, I don't know. But uh, that's what Jack, the, uh, the owner of the marina I talked to, said. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I just want to look at this um, a little bit longer. Snug Harbor Marina. BHF channel is 9 or 11. Okay. Maximum length is 135. No, the maximum length is 70. So this, this book must not be updated. I guess so. Because the docks are going to go past are floating. And he said they're 70. They just wouldn't be very good for us. 50 amp service. Yeah. Uh, trailer. Repairs. Good. Gas and diesel. They got ice and groceries. Yeah. Restrooms, showers, laundry, pump out. Um, internet and restaurant. You said the restaurant should be up. Through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then the rest of them are miscellaneous. Yeah. What number are we? We're technically number 17, but it's not numbered. So, okay. 
Yeah. It's not. It's it's going to be seven past ten. That's why he told us it because seven um, anything over ten isn't numbered. But okay. yeah. Does it have any numbers on the top? No. Will he be there to show us where exactly it is? No, that's why he gave us sub such specific instructions. Seventeen. What seven past ten? It's going to be. It, it would be dock number 17. We're going to be between a hunter and a power boat that's gray and white. Okay. That and it's going to be past, it's going to be um, the floating like docks. The third dock or the... I don't know. We'll have to look at, once we get past the docks that are 1 through 10, yeah. numbered, those are all numbered, yeah. then we'll go seven docks past that. Well, like what what three we'll, real we'll, docks. But, but slips slips okay slips so we could do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so it should be on the first or second dock then. yeah and, and we have those boats as markers okay how's she feeling pretty solid I don't have like a great idea or view of where this pier is. Just to follow. See it. No, I'm not following the chart, but like, I think right now we'd be able to see like a lighthouse. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. There's a little white dot silver thing up there that I think it is, so I'm just heading towards that. Yeah. So, for an update on our, our sail trim here, so once we came around Big Sable, we didn't have our mainsail on, then we put it up, and then, then we took it down, we put it up with a reef, and then after a little while we decided to take it all the way down, and then we were getting, reaching about haul speed, over haul speed, we got up to 6.8 knots with just, with just the Genoa, and what that means is our haul speed is around uh, 6.4 knots, and that means we are really overpowered. There's a lot of power in those sails. We reefed in the Genoa by just furling it in, so we furled in the Genoa. And now with just the Genoa, what are we, what are we getting now? Just speed. Five seven. Five seven. It fluctuates between five seven and six. So we're still getting a lot of power with just kind of the, the Genoa we have out, uh, which is pretty amazing. That means the wind is is uh, is whipping whipping behind us. We're on a very broad reach right now. And it's been perfect because we have these following seas, which is why we're able to get, get that speed that we're getting right now. I haven't broken six in a while, but... So we're just about to arrive in Pent Water. We're coming along the coast right now. You can see the water tower, the pier head in front of us. Apparently one of the things about Pent Water that it's really well known for is there's a lot of shipwrecks around here. They're not really marked on this uh, GPS uh, chart plotter, but if you look on a chart, there's a fair amount of them. This... this no, that's just... I don't think so. That almost looks like something we said. No, but this is, that was over towards Whitehall. That's something else. Anyway, so we're about to come in here. We're gonna roll up the Genoa. Um, so we're coming into a new port. We're gonna come in under power versus under sail. It's because we don't know it yet. Um, and looking forward to Pentwater. We might actually be here a couple days. Tomorrow is looking like mostly rain, so um, rain is, it's not that we can't sail in it. It's just that uh, it's wet. <laughs> and uh, it's nicer to be relatively dry when we're. Here you go. 
it drains our resolve. Especially because the next haul is a long one. <laughs> So this orange thing that says fuel and the uh, watchtower, that is this guy's, uh, part of this guy's property. So we're gonna come in and around it and then go and on port here. What? We're going south right now, due south. So we just got in, Theo's uh, finishing tying up the boat, uh, and then go ahead and plug in it, plug her in. But this is a really cool uh, marina, actually, I've never seen so many sailboats in one marina besides like a yacht club. You guys, I just found a big daddy Catalina over here. This is just so cool. These are like, so this is this is a Catalina. It's got to be a 45. I mean, it's just a huge boat. And this is a Hobart Grassy 43. Okay. I mean, two really great, very large boats. Really cool. Walk down the dock and see what else we can find. Oh man, this is a pretty boat too. Wow. This boat we're coming up to right now, it's like I've heard of it, but I've never actually seen one in person. It's a vision, it's the name of the boat. Um, and it's, it has a really nice shape to it. Really cool boat. It's a deck salon. You don't see a lot of these boats, at least where we are in in Lake Michigan because <clears throat> you know these are these these boats these last few boats we've been looking at they're blue water boats and um, you know Lake Michigan isn't technically blue water even though it is really really big I mean it helps to have a boat like this but it's really cool to see these boats that could really sail around the world I mean, these are really world-class cruising boats Easy soup, easiest meal of the year. That's my water. Where? Not bad. Nice and warm. Sure, I can just 